Hello everyone, I'm Canadian Ham and welcome to the Burrow. It's pre-release day. Well, last night was, but I managed to pick up my stuff for my local LGS and we're going to open up some packs. Now, I've done something a little crazy this season. Uh, I haven't looked at any spoilers whatsoever and the reason why is there's no draft. I didn't see a point. I wanted to give myself a nice surprise because I'm a huge fan of Viking lore and I kind of wanted every pack, especially with new art and new snowlands and everything involved. Uh, I wanted to keep it a nice surprise. Now, with that being said, on this video, I'm before we open up packs, I'm going to cover some top five aspects of Viking mythology and lore I'm hoping to actually find within the set. Uh, what wizards missed or what they could have gotten or what they did hit perfectly. I'm looking forward to seeing what we have. Now, number five is Yggdrasil, the great ash tree, a tree that holds the cosmos, all nine realms of the cosmos, uh, is typically depicted as a large tree having three roots, each one containing a realm and, or various realms in between. Uh, Nilfenheimer, or the world of the dead, ruled by Loki's daughter Hel, is found on one. The next is the Gananga Gap, which is the world of the frost giants. And then there is a third, which is the realm of giants. Above that, kind of centered in the ma main trunk, is the world of Midgard, which is the realm of man. Uh, above that, kind of up into the canopy, but not fully into the canopy, is Asgard, which is the world of the gods. Odin's Mead Hall and pretty much what every Viking warrior is aspiring to reach. Now, there's a lot of detail to go into on Yggdrasil, or the Tree of Life, or the Tree of the Cosmos. I'm not going to go into every single aspect. I just wanted to bring it up to talk more so on... I'm hoping Wizards will do an interpretation of this card, or in a card, because it it, it is a very, very important part of Viking mythology. Um, whether they make it powerful or not, that, that's yet to be seen. We'll find out today, hopefully. But overall, I'm hoping that they actually do this in a variation. Number four, Nidhogg. Now, I did have Jormungandr as, which is the serpent of the sea. Uh, he kind of makes the world go round and protects and protects sailors and so on and so forth. But I thought this one might be a little bit more interesting as I did see the spoiler video, uh, the two minute video that Wizards released, and there is a serpent up in the tree. And I'm wondering if he was Jormungandr or if he was Nidhogg. Nidhogg is a dragon that gnaws at the roots of Yggdrasil. Uh, he is depicted as kind of evil, villainous, and his main intentions on every action he takes is to cause the cosmos to go back into chaos. So it was, I'm not too sure with the spoiler video that I've seen, the only thing I've seen for spoiler, uh, is I'm not sure if that serpent is Jormungandr or if it's supposed to be Nidhogg. But I thought I'd bring him up for my number four because, well, it would be kind of cool to see an evil dragon this time. Now, number three is the Bithros. Uh, it's been depicted various ways, uh, a shining glass crystal bridge, a rainbow bridge. But overall, I'm actually interested to see if Wizards will actually do something of this sort. Um, it is typically depicted as a rainbow bridge, though, in Viking mythology. It connects uh, Asgard to all the surrounding realms, more so Midgard. But the giants use it uh, during Ragnarok uh, to breach Asgard. So I'm hoping that uh, Wizards does something like this, maybe making like an ensnaring bridge of sorts. I don't know. We'll find out. The last two are going to be pretty interesting. Uh, number two is Fenrir, the wolf. It's the son of Loki. Uh, he's been depicted as a giant wolf, uh, very evil, but he was raised, funny enough, he was raised in Asgard. Uh, he, he was raised by the gods, 
but became so powerful and untamable, and he was driving the gods from house and home, that they decided to chain him up. But no matter how hard they could, they couldn't chain him up. Uh, and he eventually broke free. So the gods turned to the dwarf smith's broker to see if he could maybe forge something to tie him down. Now, that leads into my next one, but he, they did, the dwarves did forge a ribbon, which the gods tricked Fenrir and tied him down, and it turned into magical runic chains. Held him there for some time, but during Ragnarok, Loki, because Fenrir is the son of Loki, broke him free, and he trampled through Asgard, eating and gobbling up most gods, including Odin himself. He's depicted as a true face of Ragnarok, uh, as well as Nidhogg, but there is no depiction of actually Nidhogg leading anything to do in Ragnarok, maybe a catalyst. So I'm hoping to see some giant wolf, something evil. We'll find out. Now to my number one, Melnir, or Thor's Hammer. But I'm not necessarily going to talk about Melnir. I'm actually going to more focus on the dwarves that forged it. Uh, Broker and Sindri. Now, the two dwarves, uh, they, do, they did have a rival, the Avaldi brothers, which were other dwarf smiths. They created Odin's spear. They created uh, Freyr's ship. Can't remember the name of it. But when Broker was in Asgard, he overheard Loki, the god Loki, boasting about the Avaldi brothers' inventions and craftsmanship and that there could be none better. Broker approached Loki and the gods in the Great Mead Hall and boasted that him and his brother could forge something just as nice, if not much more superior. So the bet was made. And Broker went back to his brother Sindri and forged various things, the Boer Freyr, Odin's Rings, and Melnir. Now, Melnir was supposed to have a long handle, double-handed in fact, but during the forging, because, they did, because Loki didn't want to be made a fool, he hid himself and disguised himself as Freyr's Boer and bit Broker during the actual forging, which messed up the forging process and gave him a short handle. They then had to go in turn and forge gauntlets so Thor could actually wield the hammer properly. Uh, I did want to bring up some honorable mentions uh, of some creatures that I was, I'm kind of hoping to see as well. Jormungandr, which is the serpent that kind of encompasses the ocean and swirls around and protect sailors, uh, as well as Rathlesker, which is a squirrel that goes up and down the tree, uh, sending messages, as well as the great eagle uh, that lies on top. And he communicates with the squirrel, and the squirrel is supposed to transfer messages to the gods and down to Midgard. Uh, but it's also been depicted that he goes down and annoys Jormungandr. So of those three, a squirrel, a giant eagle, and a serpent, water serpent, would be kind of appreciated to see within this set. Uh, but those are my top five. Hopefully we come across some of those within the set, but we'll find out. Um, but, but, but beforehand, let's uh, let's get ready to get settled in to do some pack openings. I'm, I'm, I can't wait. Let's make some coffee first. Hi, uh, you guys came back a lot faster than I was expecting. Don't judge me though. We're living in a pandemic. All right. 
get into cracking. So I want to give a shout out to my local LGS, Paradise Games. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be opening up any of this stuff. that off to the side. Natural 20. No, 13. Oh. Hopefully nobody is uh, has triskaidekaphobia. Okay, so remember, we're looking for Yggdrasil. We're looking for references of Nidhogg, Fenrir, uh, the Bifrost, and uh, hopefully some dwarves. Now, I'm not really assuming that uh, they're going to have the names, but we shall see. Okay. Now, remember, guys, I haven't seen any of these yet, so I'm pretty, pretty excited. Wings of the Cosmos. Instant target creature gets plus one, plus three, gains flying until end of turn. Untap it. Droger Thought Thief. When Drogon Thought Thief enters the battlefield, look at the top card of your target player's library. You may put that card in the graveyard. Not bad. That would have been uh, that would have been good for draft. Tuskiri Firewalker. Boast. Oh, new mechanic. Pay one. Exile top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. Activate this ability only if this creature attacked in turn and only once each turn. Interesting. I guess wizards had to limit it somehow. Exard Braggard. Dwarf Warrior. Well, we got some runes. That's nice to see. Uh, let's see. Between planes, boast. Okay, he has boast. Untap Exard Braggard. Put a 1 1 counter on it. Activate this ability. Okay, 3 3. Snakeskin Veil. Instant, put a 1-1 counter on target creature control, it gains hex fruit until on to turn. Some cheap protection, that's not actually bad at all. Wither Crown, ooh, I like the art. Enchantment or enchanted creature has base power zero, and at the beginning of your upkeep, you lose one life unless you sacrifice this creature. <sighs> oh, that's fun. That's fun. Feed the Serpent. Exile target creature. Arachno form. Aura. It's every creature type. Run ashore. Ooh, here's some good depiction. Four blue blue. Choose one or both. The owner of target non-land permanent puts it on top of the library or bottom of the library. Top or bottom of the library. Return target target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Vault Robber. Exile a creature card from the graveyard. Create a treasure token. The dwarves believe works of art should be passed down to generations. Not... Alright. Dual Strike. For the first, uncommon. Uh, two, two red. When you cast the next instant sorcery spell with converted mana cost four or less this turn, copy that spell. Hmm. Not bad. Egar, the freezing flame. Giant wizard. Whenever a creature or planeswalker an opponent controls is dealt excess damage, if a giant wizard or spell you control dealt damage to this turn, draw a card. I know a deck that could go in. Ooh, we get our first alternate art. Look at that. Gorgeous. Love the bordering. Oh, this is amazing. Cole the Forge Master. Legendary creature, Dwarf Warrior. Whenever another non-token creature you control dies, if it was enchanted or equipped, they return to its owner's hand. Creature tokens you control that are enchanted or equipped get plus one, plus one. It's interesting that it's creature tokens. And for the rare, 
rally the ranks. To rally the ranks enters the battlefield, creatures you control of the chosen type, or as it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Creatures you control of the chosen type get plus one, plus one. It's not bad. Good for tribal. Oh, wow, look at the art on these lands. It's gorgeous. They kind of actually remind me of the old lands, old art on the lands. Oh my god. A foretell token. There we go. Foretell token. Okay. So far, nothing. I haven't hit anything yet, but we'll get there. Cactus wouldn't let go. Okay. Cinderheart Giant. Five red red for seven. Seven six trample. When it dies, it deals seven damage to a creature and opponent controls at random. Powerhouse. Doomscar Oracle. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, you gain a life. It has foretell. Another mechanic, actually. Maybe I missed it on the other cards. I never read, but I think this is the first time I've seen it. Uh, during your turn, you may pay two. Exile this card from your hand face down. Cast it later on for its foretell cost. Okay. It's kind of like uh, investing. Man, could you imagine being that guy getting in a fight at a bar? Someone just yelling at you like that in a bar? Oh, I'd be terrified. Pilfering Hawk. Ooh, gorgeous art. Snow creature. This is our first snow creature. One blue for two. One two flying. You can pay a man a snow source to draw a card, discard a card. That would be really good for uh for draft. So far, it seems like I would have went with blue. Comus Faithful. 3-1, Elf Cleric. When Comus Faithful dies, each player mills three cards. Great Serpent, hear my song. We wait our faithful unshaken for your glorious return. Second Snow Creature, Ice Hide Troll. Oh, I was wondering if there's going to be some good trolls in this set. Tuna Green for three. Two, three. When Ice Hide Troll... Uh, you can pay two land, snow land source, or two. Okay. Ice Side Troll gets plus one, plus two, plus zero, and gains indestructible at the end of the turn. Tap it. Sovras Packmate. Enters battlefield, draw a card. That's Fort Hell. Yarl of the Forsaken. Ooh. Enter the battlefield, destroy target creature, planes, or opponent controls. I was dealt damage at the turn. It's okay. It's okay. Open the Omen Paths. Two red for three. Choose one. Add two mana of any one color and two mana of any other color. Spend this mana only cast creature enchantment spells. It's not bad. It's you do get a bit of a mana investment with this. This is actually not a bad common. Raven Wings. Equipment. For two. Equip creature gets plus one plus zero oh, and has flying and is a bird in addition to its other types. A little bird tribal, you can throw in some random stuff. Struggle for Skemfar. Oh. Some feuding elves, I see. Okay, first uncommon for this pack, Igna Rune Eyes. When Igna Rune Eyes enters the battlefield, scry three. When Igna Rune Eyes dies, draw three cards if three or more creatures died this turn. I guess that's good for board wiping, if you get board wiped. 
Ooh, runed crown. Gorgeous art. Could almost use that art for a treasure token. Or for the monarch, sorry. When the rune crown enters battlefield, you may search your library, hand, and or graveyard for a rune card and put it onto the battlefield attached to a rune crown. If you search your library this way, shuffle it. Quick creature gets plus one, plus one. Interesting. So apparently runes are in the set. Okay. And here's one right here. Rune of Mor Morality. Enchant permanent. Uh, the rune morality enters the battlefield. Draw a card. As long as the enchant permanent is a creature, it has death touch. Uh, as long as enchanted permanent is an equipment, it has equipped this equipped creature as death touch. See, it's interesting. Before going through this set, uh, when it was first announced, I talked to some friends of mine, and we were hoping that there was going to be enchantment that you could put on uh, equipment. Okay, for the rare elvish war master. Elf Warrior, when one or more elves enters the battlefield under your control, create a 1 1 grief elf creature token. This ability triggers only once each turn. Understandable. Uh, for 7 mana, 5 and 2 green. Elves you control get plus 2 plus 2 and gain death touch until end of turn. Elf Tribal, here we come. Ooh, Dual Land. Highland Forest. Snowland, Mountain Forest. It's, battlefield tap. it's nice because unlike the guild gates or most dual lands, they don't have the mountain and forest, so you can't go and tutor these up. But now you can. Look at that art. Gorgeous, gorgeous art. I can't get over the lands. And an arena token. Okay, on to pack three. Warhorn Blast. Creature use control, get plus two, plus one till end of turn. It has a foretell. Brian Burrow Intruder. Enters the battlefield, target creature and opponent controls, gets negative two, negative zero till end of turn. Locked in the ice of Carfell, the treasures of ancient nobles awaits its ruin guarded by the dead. Run amok. I ran the muck the other day. Uh, pay one and a mountain Tark attacking creature gets plus three plus three and gains trample until end of turn. Ooh, glittering frost, no enchantment, aura. Beautiful art. I love the colors in there. Enchanted land is snow. An enchanted land is tapped for mana, its control adds an additional mana of any one color. Oh, that's awesome. Demonic gifts. For a second there, I thought it said demonic tutor. I was like, what? Uh, pay one in a swamp until in turn, target creature gets plus two plus zero and gains when this creature dies, return to the battlefield under its owner's control. Not bad. Ooh, Snowland, special Snowland. Sh Shimmer Drift Veil. Gorgeous. That looks a um, representation of the Bifrost. Right there. And I think... Cool, the Forge Master. I just realized now that uh, this is our first. This is another representation that I was hoping to find. The Forge Master, legendary dwarf creature. So there's one representation of the Bifrost. Uh, enters the battlefield. When it enters the battlefield, choose a color. You may add mana, the chosen color. It's fantastic. Uh, Dusk Wielder. I'm gonna try and go through these a little bit faster here. Dwarven Reinforcements, create two 2-1 two, red Dwarf Berserker creature tokens. Right, raise the Druger. Oh, nice. They have Druger. I suppose it's a good interpretation for zombies. Frost Peak Yeti. Ooh, we have Yetis. Fantastic. Ooh, Saga. Ascent of the Worthy. Choose creature you control. Until your next turn, all damage that we dealt to that creature you control is dealt to that creature. Two creatures you control is dealt to that creature instead. Okay. Uh, that's the first and second. And then number three, return target creature card from a graveyard to the battlefield with a flying counter on it. That creature is an angel warrior in addition to its other types. Oh, nifty. 
Icebind Pillar, Snow Artifact. Uh, tap target artifact or creature. Interesting. Skimfar Shadow Mage, Elf Cleric. Who that's a lot of text. When Sh Shadow Mage enters the battlefield, choose one. Each opponent loses X life, where X is the greatest number of creatures you control that have creature type in common. Uh, you gain X life, where X is the greatest number of creatures you control that share the same creature type. And the rare is Baseless Haven, a rare land. Uh, tap it for colorless, you can pay three snow. Baseless Haven becomes a 4-3 creature with vigilance in all creature types until end of turn. It is everywhere and nowhere, a place unbound by logic, just beyond the real. Hmm. And a gorgeous swamp land. Oh, I love the lands in this set, guys. Love it. And one of those modal double face cards. Okay, halfway through. So far, so far we have hit two of the theories, I suppose. Uh, well, one for sure, but the other one had representation of the Big Frost. Warhorn Blast again. Brian Burrow Intruder. Run Amok. Wings of the Cosmos. Oh, look at that art. Gorgeous art. Target creature gets plus one, plus three, and gains flying talent to turn on tap it. The wolf startled yelp changed quickly to a howl of elation as she soared over her envious pack mates. It's a very cool depiction. Dread Rider, Spirit Knight. Uh, pay two and tap it. Exile creature card from your graveyard. Target opponent loses three life. Okay. What kind of monstrous grave robber leaves the treasures but takes the bodies? This guy. That guy. King Harold's Revenge. Two and a green. Un Iron Verdict. Iron Verdict deals five damage to target tap creature. Ooh, that guy's definitely not having a good day. Look at that. Dog Pursuit. Run ashore. Yeah. Which one of you slug brain milk socks forgot to make an offering to Cosma? I suppose Cosma is one of the gods. Okay. Doomscar Titan. Giant Berserker. First uncommon. Second uncommon. Giant's Amulet. Ooh. Equipment artifact. When Giant's Amulet enters the battlefield, you may pay four. If you do, create a 4 4 blue giant creature token attack. The amulet. Equip creature gets plus zero plus one and has this creature as hex proof as long as it's untapped. Interesting. Ooh, look at that. Gorgeous. Now these lands, like I mentioned before, they do reminisce and reminisce of the old lands. Like just the, the art style. It's not so it's almost realistic in a way. Like I could find a place like this on Earth. Lajara Mirror Lake. Enters tapped. Uh, you can pay Two green, green, the blue, and sacrifice it. Create a token that's a copy of target creature you control, except it enters the battlefield and additional one more counter on it. That's nuts for utility land. Nuts. And the rare is another saga, the Raven's Warning. Number one, create a 1-1 one, one blue creature token, bird creature token with flying, you gain two life. Two, whenever one or more creatures you control with flying deal combat damage to a player this turn, look at that player's hand and draw a card. And three, you may put a card from you own from outside the game on top of your library. Interesting. Now, I don't know if that really works much for Commander. I don't know, do you guys, does anybody out there play with sideboards in Commander? Or do you just use your whole collection for instances like that? Uh, another snow-covered mountain, yet again. Beautiful. And we got a foil. Rune of Might. Enchanted Permanent. Uh, when the Rune of Might enters the battlefield, draw a card. As long as Enchanted Permanent is a creature, it gets plus one, plus one, and has trample. And if it's enchanting and equipment, it gets plus one, plus one, and trample. There, and a dwarf token. 
Okay. Throw this out here for anybody that's interested. Two packs to go, and then we got our we got our promo card to unveil, which I don't know what it is. Kind of I buried it. Seize the spoils. Battlefield Raptor. First strike, one, two, flying bird. Bragg Strider, another giant, giant wizard, snow creature. Just tidy up here a little bit. Starting to get all, all over the place. Priest of the Haunted Edge, Zombie Cleric. Sacrifice Priest of the Haunted Edge. The target creature gets negative X, negative X until end of turn where X is the number of snow lands you control. Okay. Jespa Sentinel, Jespera Sentinel. One, one, two, reach. Untap the target creature you control, add one man of any color. Wow. That's bonkers. I, that's just ridiculous. Mana Ramp Central. Whew. I know what deck that's gonna go into. Elder Leaf Mentor, Elf Warrior. Uh, it's like the oldest looking elf I've ever seen. That guy. He's rough shape. An Elder Leaf Mentor enters battlefield, create a 1 1 green elf creature token. Well, I guess swarming elves are back. Giant Ox, creature Ox. Giant Ox cruise vehicles using its toughness rather than its power. Okay, so have this ox drive a ship or something. How strong is he? Well, I once lost control of the plow and he carved a furrow right through my house. Didn't even slow it down. Wow. It's kind of funny. I just pictured an ox driving a vehicle. Uh, Demon Bolt deals four damage to our creature planeswalker. Board. Sculptor of Winter. Two untapped target snow land. Gorgeous art. Oh, look at her ears. Look at those ears. Celtic knot ears. I wonder if that hurt. Ooh, Skemfall Elder Hall. Uh, you can pay two black, a uh, green, and two. Sacrifice it. Up to one target creature you don't control gets negative two and negative two. Create two one one elf creature tokens. Beautiful art. I can't get over these lands, guys. I can't. Okay, we got our first angel. Ferja, Judge of Valor. Two white, black, black. Two four, flying with lifelink, angel cleric. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, Look at the top three cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand, the rest into the graveyard. Nice. Briz Blizzard Brawl. That guy has balls. Okay. And for the rare. It's a mythic. Woo! Falky God of Lies. One in a black. Two one. Creature God. When Valky enters the battlefield, each opponent reveals their hand. For each opponent, exile a creature card they revealed this way until Valky leaves the battlefield. X. Choose a creature card exiled with Valky converted band cost X. Valky becomes a copy of that. And it's a modal. Tibbled. So I guess. I could choose to play it as a planeswalker. When Tibble enters a battlefield, you get an emblem with. You may play cards exiled with Tibble Cosmic Imposter, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast those spells. Uh, plus two, exile the top card of each player's library. Negative three, exile target artifact or creature. Negative eight, exile all cards from all graveyards. Add three mana. That is bonkers. Now, guys, I'm not going to be doing any. Uh, card prices because 
the set just released and they're usually extremely high so it's not really accurate and fair for me to do that uh that's beautiful snow art oh i still can't get over the lens i know i just pulled a mythic but come on raise the druger foil so it's their second foil and a token well i guess that's loki we got a god representation of loki but still no no uh yggdrasil uh no fenrir and no Needhog or Jormungandr either. But Haggy Mob, Troll Berserkers, Master Scald. Master Scald enters the battlefield and may exile a creature card from your graveyard. If you do return artifact enchantment from your graveyard to your hand. Interesting. Disdainful Stroke. Very sure, Poundy. Hmm. Breakneck Berserker. Village Rights. Ah, uh, this is a great card. Uh, it's nice to see uh, another reprint. Masked Vandal. Shapeshifter. Interesting. Skull Raid. An opponent discards two cards. If fewer than two cards discarded this way, you draw cards equal the difference. So, if he discards one, you draw one. Could have just said that. Shackles of Treachery. Raven form. Ooh, that's gorgeous looking art. Target artifact or creature. Exile target artifact or creature. Its controller creates a 1 1 blue bird creature token. That's interesting. Um, that's like a Beast Within or Chaos Warp or Generous Gift. Actually, more so Generous Gift, and I guess it's Beast Within. Blue has it, I suppose, and I. 1 1 bird. Better than a 3 3, in my opinion. Bound in gold. Champ permanent can attack, block, or crew vehicles, and its activated abilities can't be activated unless they're mana abilities. So complete shutdown. I don't know about you guys, but I would be uh, kind of in a lot of pain in that situation. First uncommon of this, the last pack, Druger Helm. I'm just getting a headbutt about that guy. Uh, Druger Helm enters the battlefield, you may pay three. Uh, if you do create a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token, attach it, and a cri equipped creature gets plus 2, plus 2, and has menace. That's okay, I guess. For a total of 5 mana, you get a 4-4 four, four with menace. Not bad. I guess in certain situations. Lidjara Glade Warden, Shapeshifter, Changeling... Okay, and for the rare of this pack. Oh no, sorry. Finding the old gods. Destroy target and all permanent portal controls. Search your library for a force card, put it on battlefield tapped, and then creatures you control gain death touch until end of turn. Okay, now for the rare. We have Rise of the Dread Marn. For three, create X-2-2 two, two black zombie berserker creature tokens, where X is the number of non-token creatures that died this turn. This could be pretty good with the uh, Nevenral from Commander Legends, actually. This would be a good little combo, especially with the Fortel, uh, because you can pay the two, exile the card from your hand face down, and then you can cast it for one. So if you board wipe, bring him in for one mana, you could potentially build a board up with a lot of zombies. That's actually not a bad combo, especially with the Fortel, actually. Beautiful land, swamp, and a bird token. All right, guys. Uh, let's take a look at my promo. And it's a mythic. Halvar, God of Battle. 
Wow, we got two gods. That's that's incredible. Let's open this up. I gotta be careful here. I don't want to do it, don't want to necessarily bend the card. Okay. Whew, gorgeous. Okay, have our god of battle. Creatures you control that are enchanted or equipped have double strike. At the beginning of each combat, you may attach target aura or equipment attached to a creature you control target. Okay. At the beginning of each combat, you may attach target aura or equipment attached to a creature you control to target creature you control. Okay, so you get to move equipment around for free. And equip creatures have double strike. So, equipment tribal. And this is one of those modal ones. So, Sword of the Realms. <sighs> okay. Uh, equipped creature gets plus two, plus zero, and has vigilance. When this equipped creature dies, return it to its owner's hand. Wow. I can't believe we got two. Mythics. That was a great pre-release, and that is a gorgeous, gorgeous card. The foiling actually is a lot nicer looking now than Commander Legends, so it's kind of nice to see. All right, well, that about hits my my curiosity. Uh, I still got lots of packs to open, but uh, overall, I would say. I only got two of the hits of what I was hoping, but overall, there's so many good themes, and I like the fact that they represented Loki um, and other gods. So I look forward to opening up more. But overall, yeah. Well, thanks for watching the video. Uh, if you like the video, please subscribe, hit the bell notifications, and hit the like button, because once I get some likes, I'll be able to start doing more videos. And overall, thanks for watching, guys, and Scald!